The shoes that you wear on your e-mountain bike rides will have a massive influence as to how comfortable you feel on your bike, how much control you have, and how connected you feel to your bike too. So today, we're gonna to be taking a look at mountain biking shoes in a lot of detail. So before we get started on shoes, let's take a look at the pedals that you can use on your e-mountain bike. Now these are gonna be in the form of flat pedals and clip pedals. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of a flat pedal first. Well, firstly, it's gotta come down to cost. A flat pedal is gonna be a lot cheaper than a clip and shoe combination. Uh, then there is the usability of these pedals. You can jump on your bike no matter what shoes you're wearing that day, be it down the shops or doing a run at your local trail center. Then there is the amount of confidence that these pedals inspire. Being able to dab your foot in a second is an essential part of e-mountain biking, particularly when you ride in slippery conditions. But as with anything in life, there are a few cons of the flat pedal. Firstly, it's gonna be that your feet can slip around, particularly in technical terrain, or if you're getting a lot of high impact, you can find your feet skipping around, or even on jumps, if you haven't got the right technique, you may find that your feet are actually leaving the pedals. And sometimes, not quite as efficient, particularly on those longer rides. You may be able to eke a few miles, a few more miles range using a clip pedal versus a flat. And moving on to the clip pedal. Now these are said to be a lot more efficient than a flat pedal. And you, as I say, you might be able to get a little bit more range and possibly a little bit more power when it comes to those technical sections too. But it is a lot different technique. Then there is the thing of being actually connected to the bike. So you're not gonna ever slip a pedal in those rough sections, particularly on a hardtail that's skipping around, your feet are always gonna be in the same place. And lastly, a clip pedal can help some of those beginner riders out with things such as rear wheel lifts and bunny hops. Being able to pull that bike up with your legs is something that a clip or pedal will help you do. So the cons of the clip pedal, well, they require a little bit more maintenance. There's a few bearings and mechanisms going on that require a bit of lube and a bit of adjustment from time to time. They will be more expensive than a flat pedal because you do, as I mentioned earlier, have to combine this with a dedicated shoe. So what pedal should you ride on your e-mountain bike? Well, firstly, you need to think about what, what sort of experience you've had in the past. Maybe if you're coming from road riding, you might get away with a set of clip pedals on your e-mountain bike purely because you're experienced enough at clipping in and out. But e-mountain e biking is definitely a lot different to road biking, so take that into consideration. But if you're coming from mountain biking in general or BMX or other cycling disciplines, then you may find that a flat pedal is definitely gonna be the one for you, particularly if you're a beginner, you're gonna find that a lot easier and your confidence will definitely grow. As for me, I ride flats for pretty much 99% of my riding because purely I like to have that freedom of being able to take my feet off and jump off the bike uh, if it gets out of shape. But if I was to go on a big cross country ride, then I probably would clip in. But what pedals should you run? Well, I suggest maybe try them both. If your budget allows, try a set of clip pedals, see if they're for you, or try a set of flat pedals if you're a clip pedal user. Vice versa, just try and find out which works for you. It's down to personal preference at the end of the day. Now, as with the pedals that we've just talked about, you're gonna find two different types of cycling shoes on the market. One being flat pedal shoes, and the other being clipless pedal shoes. And as the name suggests, these marry up with the certain types of pedals. Flat pedals and clip pedals are gonna match each of these different shoes. So let's take a look at the clipless pedal shoe in a bit more detail. Now these are designed for being used with clipless pedals, but the word clipless is a little bit confusing actually, because it kind of suggests that you're not gonna be attached to the bike, when in fact the opposite is actually true. You're gonna be clipped into that pedal, meaning you've got constant pedal, uh, pedal contact. They'll often have a stiffer sole and be covered in a lot of tech materials too. Now turning the shoe over, you're gonna find a channel in the bottom of the shoe where the cleat sits. Now the cleat can be adjusted in many different ways and that is what provides a contact between the pedal and the shoe, keeping it nice and clipped together. Now next in line is the flat pedal shoes. And as the name suggests, these are designed to be used with flat pedals. Now traditionally, these were a little bit more casual looking than the clipping brothers, but things have been changing recently. I mean, check these two different shoes out, same models from Crank Brothers, but I turn them over, 
and one is a flat pedal shoe and one is a clip-in style. Now the main difference between these shoes is just going to be in that sole stiffness. There's also quite a few different e-mountain bike specific options on the market from Physique, Shimano and many more. Now these share quite a lot of the features of a flat pedal shoe such as the more casual looking style for those all important cafe stops and those wide sticky rubber soles. They're going to be super comfortable for those big days out. So do you need an e-mountain bike specific shoe? Well, it depends on the type of riding that you're doing. If you're spending a lot of time up in the hills doing big rides over mountains and maybe mixing in a little bit of hiker bike, then yes, you may find the benefits of those e-mountain bike specific shoes are gonna help you out. But if you're doing general day-to-day -day trail riding, mixing with a bit of cross country and maybe the odd bike park or so, then you're gonna find that you may get the same kind of experience from a general flat pedal shoe. So what should you be looking out for when it comes to selecting the right shoe for you? Let's take a look at a few of the key features. First up is gonna be sole rubber. Now, if you're using flat pedals, the rubber on your sole is gonna be super important. And it's an area which some companies have struggled with in the past, but now they've really got it dialed. And if you combine these with extra long pins on your pedals, you can have a really, really secure connection to your bike. And with clip shoes, when it comes to the rubber on the sole, well, you want the area around the cleat not to be very sticky because this can hamper you getting clipped into that pedal. But elsewhere on the shoe, you want it to be super grippy. So if you are doing that hiker bike section and walking with your e-bike, you really want to get as much purchase to the ground as possible. Protection is also something you definitely want to consider when it comes to choosing that right shoe for you. With an e-mountain bike, you're gonna ride slightly more terra technical terrain than you would do on a normal mountain bike. For instance, when you're climbing that technical climb deep in a rut, you might find yourself hitting a few of the roots and rocks with your toes. So definitely toe protection should definitely be considered in the form of a reinforced toe box on the shoe. And elsewhere, you might want to think about a bit of ankle protection too. On some shoes, such as this Shimano option, you have a low profile cut one side, and on the area that contacts the crank is actually raised, so you're not gonna be scuffing your ankle bone and just giving that bit more padding. And with some shoes, you'll actually find that they're gonna be available in a high top version or a low top. That high top version is gonna give you the ultimate protection and that bit more support for your ankles. Then there is the durability of the shoe to think of too. Now this is a shoe that I've had for quite a few years now and I do ride this pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis and it is very minimalistic as cycling shoes go but it is designed for actually riding bikes. But I have done a few miles in it recently and it is starting to show quite a few signs of wear. So on the front of the toe you can see that that area has definitely had a lot of contact with some trail debris and it's getting quite worn. And on the inside, on the area that contacts the crank, now this is getting quite polished and you can see it's definitely wearing the shoe as well as my crank arm and possibly my chainstay. Now, if I look at this shoe from Shimano, it's actually got a big panel here that is pretty hard wearing. It's designed to be in contact with that crank arm and not wear as much. And of course, you've got the reinforced toe box, which is made of a different material. And on top, to keep the laces protected, you've got this Velcro enclosure, which is really gonna stop all that water and the dirt making it onto the laces and possibly entering that shoe too. Now, pedal compatibility is something you definitely need to think about when it comes to choosing those shoes too. Flat pedals come in all shapes and sizes with different widths and size platforms. So finding the shoe that marries up with that is definitely going to be key. Now, some companies such as Crank Brothers actually design their flat pedal shoes to match their flat pedals. Even the depth of the lugs on these shoes matches that pedal pin length. So ultimately try and find that pedal that works with that shoe choice too. And when it comes to clip shoes compatibility, yes, you can run Shimano shoes with Shimano pedals, of course, but then you can, of course, run Crank Brothers with Crank Brothers pedals. But the important part on here is gonna be the cleat on the bottom of the shoe. Now, this is gonna allow you to swap between the different brands, meaning that you can run a Shimano shoe with a Crank Brothers pedal or vice versa. The only important part here is gonna be the cleat. So just make sure you've got the right cleat to match your pedals. Sole stiffness is something you definitely need to factor into the equation too. 
with a flat pedal shoe, it really needs a stiff sole to deliver that power without compromising the feel of the pedal underneath your feet because you need to get your foot into the right position and to feel what the bike is doing underneath you on the trail. With clip shoes, sole stiffness is probably the most important thing to consider as this can really make a difference as to how comfortable the shoe is on those longer rides and how efficient it will be at delivering that power. Now getting the right fit for your shoes is definitely really important when it comes to riding your e-mountain bike. If you're riding clips and you're riding a shoe that is too big for you, you're going to really suffer when it comes to unclipping from your pedals as your foot is going to move within the shoe uh, and not allow you to disengage properly. And if you're running two smaller shoes, well it's just going to get uncomfortable. And when it comes to sizing, a lot of manufacturers actually offer their shoes in half sizes, so to be sure to get the right size for you. And don't forget to factor in that in the summer you're going to be wearing thin socks and when it comes to those winter riding sessions you could be wearing waterproof socks which are going to be a lot fatter so don't compromise when it comes to size. Now you will of course be riding your e-mountain bike in all sorts of weather conditions from the dry dusty trails in the summer to the wet snowy trails in the winter and your shoe is definitely a really key part of this it needs to be able to breathe well in the summer to let all that hot air and sweat escape from your shoes whilst trying to keep your feet dry and warm in the winter. Now, if you think you're gonna get a riding shoe that is 100% waterproof, then you need to get that thought out of your head. It simply doesn't exist. Now, there's lots of decent shoes out there that'll actually dissipate water fast and not leave that shoe feeling heavy and waterlogged. Now, this is where the materials are really key. The new Physique Granitas have a very effective, tough, but lightweight material that doesn't hold water, as do Shimano, who do a range of materials in their shoes. If you want to get pretty much dry feet, then you can, of course, look at getting waterproof socks, or the ultimate setup is going to be a set of overshoes and waterproof long trousers. Next thing to consider is how those shoes are gonna stay on your feet. Now this is gonna be done from a variety of different methods, including the standard lace-up models. Now these are really simple uh, and they won't fail, but sometimes can come undone and maybe get tangled in your chain ring. So you need to think about that. Then there's a the ratchet style dial. Now these are really slick and super easy to use and a lot easier to clean up over those laces, but can get clogged up in poor conditions. Then there is the Velcro closures on the front of the shoes. Now these are really good at keeping all that crud and water out from those horrible conditioned rides. Now one of the great things about a flat pedal shoe is that they can become multi-use too. You can in fact use them for a lot of different sports, particularly if you go for one of those ones that's slightly more casual over those tech versions, but don't count the tech versions out because they're made of a lot of tech materials. They can become very good shoes to say walking or going out for a walk with your dog or up in the hills. It's gonna keep your feet nice and dry whilst providing a load of grip. And those casual shoes, well, they can be used for anything from going down the pub with your mates to a game of footy in the park. So you get two shoes for the price of one. And finally, a few important factors to consider when trying to find that ultimate shoe for you. One is gonna be where you ride. If you ride in the mud and slop all year round, then you definitely need something that's going to be easy to clean, that sheds mud easily and is very hard wearing, versus a rider that hits those dry and dusty trails all year round. So what shoe and pedal should you ride on your e-mountain bike? Well, unfortunately, I can't make that decision for you. That's for you to go and find out. But in today's video, I've gave you a load of information. So hopefully you should be able to get out there and make that right choice and find out what is right for you personally. But let us know whether you run flats or clips in the comments box down below or any of those experiences that you've had using clips like falling over at a standstill. I've definitely been there and done that. I'd love to hear that in the comments box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video and make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and give us a find and a follow on your favorite social media too.